Superhero movies have been the biggest thing at the box office for the past 10 years, and they don't show any sign of slowing down in 2019. Here's everything you need to know about the upcoming comic-inspired blockbusters that are set to blow you away. With a runtime of just 75 minutes, 2007's animated Superman Doomsday film barely resembled the groundbreaking 1994 Death of Superman comic book saga it was based on. Fortunately, it taught Warner Brothers a lesson. Fans want the whole story of Superman's climactic, bone-shattering battle against the monstrous Doomsday, and now we're going to get it. That began with the all-new animated Death of Superman, which debuted at Comic-Con International in 2018, and expanded the story to feature the full Justice League taking on Doomsday before Superman arrived. It went down so well with critics that its follow-up, Reign of the Superman, is getting a full-on theatrical release as a two-day double-feature event. Like its comic book counterpart, Reign of the Superman features four pretenders to Superman's recently vacated throne. The Cyborg Superman, The Eradicator, Steel, and Superboy. A teenage clone described as Superman if he'd been raised by the Kardashians. Get ready, it's set to hit theaters on January 29, 2019. If there was any doubt that the upcoming Captain Marvel film would be set in the 90s with plenty of tributes to the favorite cinematic hits of that decade, it was taken care of when the first trailer was released. There's a scene where star Brie Larson crashes through the roof of a blockbuster video right into the action section, and it doesn't get much more 90s than that. In the comics, Carol Danvers has a long history that dates back to 1968, and she's gone by several heroic codenames, including Miss Marvel, Binary, and Warbird, and even had her powers permanently stolen by Rogue from the X-Men. Since 2012, she's taken on the identity of Captain Marvel and become a fan favorite, and now she's poised to star in the Marvel Cinematic Universe's first film focused on a female superhero. That doesn't mean she'll be alone, though. Since it's a flashback story, moviegoers can expect to see the return of a few familiar faces, including Korath the Pursuer and Ronan the Accuser, last seen in Guardians of the Galaxy, and a younger Nick Fury and Agent Coulson in the earlier days of S.H.I.E.L.D. What is this? The S.H.I.E.L.D. logo! Does announcing your identity on clothing help with the covert part of your job? Throw in the fact that Carol was positioned as Nick Fury's secret weapon at the end of Infinity War, and we know exactly where we want to be when Captain Marvel hits the screen on March 8th. The word reshoot became a dirty one among DC fans after the disasters that were Suicide Squad and Justice League, but that hasn't stopped Warner Brothers from recalling the Shazam cast for some last-minute tweaks. This time, though, director David F. Sandberg has insisted that the tone of the movie, which star Zachary Levi described as Big Meets Superman, won't be altered. That's good news for DC fans who are desperate for something lighter. Judging by the trailer, Shazam appears to be following more in the footsteps of the colorful adventure of Aquaman, rather than the grim darkness of Batman vs. Superman. There are plenty of jokes, lots of action, and best of all, Levi actually acts like an enthusiastic, excited kid in the body of a superhero. <laughs> That's crazy, right? What are your superpowers? Superpowers, dude? I don't even know how to pee in this thing! After debuting in 1940 as the original Captain Marvel, Shazam quickly grew to be even more popular than Superman. And hopefully, this movie will show a whole new generation of fans why when it hits theaters on April 5th. It's the ultimate wish-fulfillment fantasy of kids who want to be superheroes themselves, with a ton of magical action thrown in for good measure. Traditionally, three DC Universe animated original movies are released every year. It's been this way since 2009, when Wonder Woman, Green Lantern First Flight, and Superman Batman Public Enemies came out. For 2019, though, the studio confirmed that it plans to drop a total of four films, including one based on Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee's acclaimed Batman storyline, Hush. Originally released as a 12-part year-long epic, Hush gave readers a mystery story with a seemingly simple solution, but with enough complications to bring in Batman's entire gallery of foes. With memorable moments like Batman having to take down Superman after the Man of Steel was possessed by Poison Ivy, the Dark Knight's relationship with Catwoman being taken to the next level, and the introduction of the sinister madman called Hush, it's been a fan favorite since it was released. Avengers Endgame is coming out on April 26th, almost a year to the day after Infinity War hit theaters. After the brutal downer of an ending that saw Thanos committing galactic genocide and killing off half of the MCU's superheroes, though, it feels like we've been waiting a lot longer than a single year to find out what happens next. In fact, we didn't even know the name of the movie until the teaser finally came out, but giving it the title Endgame is far from the only ominous thing we've gotten from the trailer. 
We've seen a world where Tony Stark is recording his final message to Pepper Potts, perhaps paving the way for her to take on her own suit of armor as rescue, where Hawkeye has gone rogue and changed his identity to Ronin, and where it looks like the only way the heroes can stop Thanos is with the help of Ant-Man? Ant-Man? Ant-Man, I know you know I know you know that. When this guy is your only hope, you know things have gone seriously bad. With the Fox Disney merger now cleared, Marvel's Merry Mutants are destined for the MCU. As a result, X Men Dark Phoenix will be a swan song for Fox's hit and miss X Men franchise. It hasn't been an easy road to get here, though. The initial release date was bumped to buy time for extensive reshoots, and there were rumors that Disney might just can the movie entirely. When it comes out on June 7th, it'll be the second time that the X movies have tried to adapt the legendary Dark Phoenix saga and fans are already worried it's going to be botched all over again. Only time will tell if Sophie Turner will fare better than Famke Jensen as the doomed Jean Grey, but if this really is the end of Fox's X-Men, then anything could happen. Oh, come on, you didn't really think Spider-Man was dead after Infinity War, did you? Whatever happens in Endgame, Tom Holland will be back in action as Peter Parker on July 5th. And while he's not quite fading to dust on the moons of Jupiter, he's still going to be pretty far from home. With Peter and his classmates embarking on a trip to Europe, it seems Spider-Man will be taking on Mysterio and maybe even Hydra-Man in places like Venice and London. Mysterio, a movie special effects genius turned super criminal con man, is an interesting choice for a villain. Who is that guy? He's like Iron Man and Thor rolled into one. He's no Spider-Man. Like the Vulture who took center stage in Homecoming, he's one of Spider-Man's classic Sinister Six and the hints that he'll be discrediting Spidey by acting as a rival superhero rather than a villain could lead to some really great fun. Don't expect Jake Gyllenhaal to hide his handsome looks under Mysterio's classic comic book bubble helmet for too long, though. The New Mutants was sold on the idea that it would be a twist on the familiar tropes that we've seen in superhero films. It's a horror movie that just happens to star characters from Marvel Comics. Director Josh Boone seemed like the perfect fit, and his passion for the project made Fox want to take a chance on him. Unfortunately, according to reports, the studio wasn't impressed with what he turned in. Instead of its scheduled release in April of 2018, The New Mutants was pushed back 10 whole months to February 2019. The official reason, according to The Hollywood Reporter, was that the studio wanted to avoid overlap with Deadpool 2 in certain overseas territories. But then it was pushed back even further to August, fueling rumors that there was something other than a simple scheduling conflict going on. Considering that the source material contains some of the most legendarily scary stories to ever be featured on the comics page, we're hoping they manage to nail it. At first glance, The Fatal Five seems like a pretty unusual set of villains for an animated Justice League story. Created by teenage writer Jim Shooter in the 60s, the quintet of bad guys were originally villains for the Legion of Superheroes, a team based in the distant future of the 30th century. Knowing all of that, it won't surprise you that they're a weird bunch of characters, including the Emerald Empress, who gains her power from a giant floating magical eyeball, and Validus, who shoots lightning bolts out of his exposed brain. On August 6th, it seems that they'll be taking the fight to our very own 21st Century Justice League which might be a stealthy way of introducing the Legion of Superheroes to the ongoing line of DC Universe original movies. While they haven't been regularly seen in comics for a few years, they've built up a dedicated fan base over the past 60 years. Of course, this could just be a story of the Justice League taking on a bunch of ultra-powerful baddies that even most comic book fans haven't seen them tangle with before. That alone makes this one worth checking out, especially since it's going to be available on DC's streaming service the same day it's released to the rest of the world. He's arguably the most iconic villain in comic book history, but the Joker has never been given a truly definitive backstory, in print or on the big screen. For many fans, that's even part of his timeless appeal. But for those of us with a little more curiosity, Warner Brothers will be offering up a story of the Clown Prince of Crime's earliest days on October 4, 2019. With the help of director Todd Phillips and three-time Academy Award-nominated actor Joaquin Phoenix, Joker will tell the story of the man who ultimately becomes Batman's deadliest arch-nemesis. The film is rumored to be a mixture of Alan Moore and Brian Boland's classic Batman The Killing Joke graphic novel and Martin Scorsese's classic King of Comedy, and was confirmed by the Warner Brothers 2019 editorial guide as, quote, an exploration of Arthur Fleck, a man disregarded by society, and is not only a gritty character study, but also a broader cautionary tale. 
We know that this will be the fourth DC Universe animated original movie released in 2019, but Wonder Woman Bloodline still remains something of a mystery. Since there's no existing Wonder Woman comic with that title, Bloodlines is set to be an original story, but all we have to go on so far is an ominous teaser poster for the October 22nd release, featuring a crumbling temple, possibly hinting at the destruction of Themyscira. The success of the live-action Wonder Woman movie meant that bringing Diana Prince back to the animated DC Universe was a no-brainer. The Amazon last appeared in a DC Universe animated film back in 2009, and while it was critically acclaimed, it didn't exactly fly off the shelves. In fact, as longtime DC animator Bruce Timm revealed back in 2018, the slow sales actually made Warner Brothers can a planned Batgirl movie based on the Batgirl Year One comic. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.